Hey everyone, this is Sarah with SewingPartsOnline.com and today we're gonna go over how to use the braiding foot. This is a great foot for adding any of those cool decorative embellishments like ribbons and rickrack and little braids. It's super fun to use, it's super easy, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to get started. So here's our braiding foot. It's a simple snap-on. It has a couple parts. This right here is a screw that you can adjust the front plate forward or backward. You're gonna adjust this backward if you have if you have a smaller braid, forward if you have a larger blade, braid. It's mostly so that the braid can be kind of snug as it's passing through, and you'll see this better when we're actually sewing. Now on the back, I'm gonna turn it over, is the groove. It's gonna help the braid pass through the machine more easily. And this is also your width indicator. You don't wanna use a braid or ribbon or elastic that's any wider than this back groove. So to install it, all we have to do is take off the foot we have on, move that out of the way, and slide it under. Go up, there we go, oh, there we go. And we are ready to start sewing. So first let's add some ribbon. This is about as wide as you wanna go for this. And this is how you're gonna insert nearly all of your embellishments. First, we're gonna go in from the top and just push it through there. It'll go under the back. If you need, you can use your tweezers or um, a seam ripper or something like that to get a hold of it and help you pull it back even more if you need to. Because I like to have a little bit in the back hanging out. So now that we have it in there, let's go ahead and just add some fabric. And you can use any kind of stitch you want. Use a zigzag or a straight stitch, whatever, whatever's your fancy. And just start sewing. Now the great thing about this is that it guides so perfectly. So if I had a straight line that I really needed to follow, I don't have to worry about going off track or anything. If I wanna do maybe some turns, I can do some turns in there. It's really cool, you can do a lot of fun decorative stuff with this foot. And I know that it's getting fee um, fed evenly. Lots of fun. And I'll show you what it looks like. Pretty neat, you can have a lot of fun with lines and swirls and kind of doing the couching thing. It's really neat. Now in my opinion, one of the coolest things about this foot is that you can use elastic. So what I'm gonna do, well it's just thin elastic, but what I'm gonna do is take the foot off so I can show you better how I insert it. I've got it cut at an angle. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna try to keep my hands out of the way as much as I can. I'm just gonna put it back in there, pull it to the back, see how that's in there? And then I'm gonna put it back on the foot. Now I've got a little tail in the back because I find that it's easier to sew if I have a little tail. Let me get my fabric, put it underneath, put a little, a few anchor stitches in there. I've got this at a zigzag. Oh, sorry, move the machine a little bit. And here we go. I'm going to pull the elastic a little bit and I'm going to hold it from the back. And you can see how um, easily this will feed and how accurately. I think a lot of us struggle with sewing like small elastic like this. So this is kind of a great foot to have if you have to sew elastic. And you're trying to get those even gathers. This is really important to have. And I can follow the seam allowance on my needle plate. I can pull it even tighter if I want. Love, love using this for elastic. Now let's go ahead and take a look. Ideally you would backstitch, but for demonstration purposes, let's just pull this out. And look at that. Woohoo, perfect. And it stretches. It's got the nice stretch. It's clean and even. Very cool. Now I've installed some braided yarn. Um, I just braided it myself. We're gonna go for a cool couching effect. Go ahead and put in some clear thread. We don't want it to show. We want it to look like it's kind of just laying on top of the fabric. Put it underneath there. I'm gonna go ahead, straight stitch. I'm gonna increase my 
stitch length to about a 3.5 because I don't want any puckering, but I can adjust it as needed. And here we go, let's just start sewing. There we go, let's see. So I want it to look like the yarn is just kind of laying on top of the fabric. And it gives it cool texture, it gives a lot of um, fun line design. It's a great decorative option. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. See, with the monofilament thread, you really can't tell that it's in there, but it looks really neat. It's really fun. You can see the braided design. It's definitely something you want to go ahead and just give a try and see what happens. So when you're going to insert um, a thread or ribbon or whatever that's a little bit smaller, you can just put it in like this, and then you can adjust this wheel to fit the width a little bit more securely. So like I've already loosened it. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. It'll give my uh, ribbon less opportunity to move around. So I'm going to have to just try to keep my hand out of the way. Now I'm going to tighten it and so that it holds it in there just a little bit better. Pull it through the back and put it on my shank. Now we're going to put the material underneath. You can see it works just as well when it's even with the smaller embellishments. I've got a straight stitch on. I'm using monofilament thread again. And the contrast of the satin and the faux leather is kind of cool. And let's take a look. And remember, it does come with a little manual for extra information. So to purchase your braiding foot, visit us online at sewingpartsonline.com or check us out on Google Plus, on Twitter at Sewing Parts, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash sewingpartsonline.